it's a little bit difficult not to give away any spoilers in this film when discussing the content because not a whole lot actually happens. So I'll do my best, but apologies in advance if I give away too much. Okay, so the film opens on some vision of the previous film and you re might remember there's a man uh, lying on his stomach and he's kind of dragged towards a witch and then he performs a rather severe back bend or what I would just call a daily yoga move, um, which looks quite painful. And then the film moves to the current day or 2013 when the current film is set. So the film is really a lot of build up um, about what happens towards the end. So there's, there's tension and a lot of discussion and you know, the camera movements of, of what might happen in the film. Um, so you don't sort of see a whole lot. You do get lots of strange noises and bumps and loud crashes and things like that. And you start seeing unusual figures. And this happens from fairly early on. You see the, the kind of creation and the formation of rather unusual figures. It starts out as an image which looks a little bit like, say, fractal noise, and then it slowly develops into a more lifelike form throughout the film. So as it takes shape, you see this kind of like inky tendrils and, and gloopy figures. You see bizarre kind of black breath and, and things like that. Um, so that takes up the bulk of the film. There are jumps and scares through the film, so expect things to rush at the camera or, or sort of rush past the camera. And these things kind of are meant to make you jump. Um, you'll see people being knocked over and, and pushed aside when these happen. So there are some deaths in the film, although most of them happen off camera. Um, you do see people being dragged, you see a man with blood on his mouth, you also see a child with bloody hands and fingers um, and blackened eyes and rather unusual things like that. Um, you see veins or black veins appearing around the neck and throat area as well as other parts of the body. Um, and you know, people are burned with acidic vomits. You see someone bitten. You also see somebody run through with, let's call it a body part. Um, you see somebody throat grabbed and then you hear a neck snap off screen to indicate that they've been killed. So they're the kind of things that happen mostly towards the end of the film. There is a little bit of sex and nudity in the film. You see two men watching a video of a couple having sex in the bedroom. They're both wearing underwear, but you see straddling and kissing and caressing and that kind of thing before they're interrupted. Uh, there's a lot of sexual references through the film and jokey banter about sex and relationships in the film. You see you know, two um, statue animals are kind of positioned in a sexually suggestive way and, and things like that. Um, no other real nudity, a bit of skimpy clothing and cleavage, but, but that's about it. There is some swearing in the film. The F word is used quite a few times as well as the S word. Um, the F word when it appears is actually quite comic. Um, it's very relatable the way that the F word is used through the film. And there's a bit of name calling in the film. There's quite a few religious references and exclamations as well. Um, drugs appear in the film as well. A, two men consume some drug laced chocolate and then there's a few kind of trippy sequences after that or where they appear to be uh, tripping out on the chocolate. There is also alcohol, but you don't see it consumed. So you see a tin of beer and you see bottles of wine, but you don't see anybody drinking. So Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension, is mostly about the tension and the build up um, rather than the violence. It's directed by Gregory Plotkin and stars Chris J. Murray and Brit Shaw and the quite remarkable Ivy George who plays the child. And it's worth watching just to go and see her performance. You can read my full breakdown of Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension at cinemum.net.